Well, we just moved out to Iowa, and of course we've dreamt about hunting big Iowa bucks our whole life. Never did we imagine we'd be hunting one our first year of this caliber. We call this Iowa giant lightning. He's got a huge frame, monster long curling tines, and a ton of extras, just an absolute bow hunter's dream. We just had one problem. This buck was not consistent at all. In fact, during the entire summer, we only got pictures of him twice. So we knew this buck was not going to be easy to figure out. Even though it was late September, I wanted to get an early start on putting mock scrapes all over this farm. I put them near the bedding areas, food areas, and even pinch points in hopes that I would catch lightning on just one of the cameras. And on September 26, I couldn't believe it. Lightning had hit one of my mock scrapes. And with season right around the corner, I couldn't be more excited. Well, we're now into October and we have no sightings of lightning. No pictures of him on the cameras, nothing. We hunted quite a few times and never saw him. And after two weeks of no pictures and no sightings of lightning, I was worried that he wasn't living on us, but living on the neighbors. But we didn't give up hope. And finally, after 24 days of no sightings, lightning finally showed back up on camera, hitting one of the scrapes. Now this has been a pretty consistent pattern for him all summer long, showing up once every 20 to 25 days. So I knew I was missing something, especially if he was living on this farm. I decided I was gonna go and pull out all the maps and pull out every single trail cam picture I ever got of him and reverse engineer each and every one of them with weather data, wind direction, everything you can think of, trying to figure out exactly where lightning was living. So after going through all the weather data in conjunction with these trail camera photos, I found a major piece to this puzzle. And every single time he showed up on camera, the wind was blowing out of the south, which told me that he likely bedded somewhere different when the wind was blowing prominently out of the north, and he preferred to bed somewhere different when the wind was blowing out of the south, which that spot just happened to be close to where my cameras were. So I started reverse mapping every single entry point that he came into the cameras and basically backtracking where he was likely coming from and a very clear picture emerged. I believed he was betting in an eight acre cedar thicket in the middle of the farm. But I wanted to make sure. So right before a big rainstorm, I actually snuck in about 50 yards into the cedar thicket that I actually call the sanctuary. And I found where three trails intersected and there was a scrape right there. I said, this is a perfect spot. I'm gonna put a trail camera up in hopes that I would get lightning coming into his bedroom. And wouldn't you know it, five days later, my cell cam goes off and it's him. It's lightning moving through the sanctuary late morning, which meant one thing, we had honed in on his core area and we had found his bedroom. I knew there was only gonna be one way we were gonna get this giant killed and we were gonna have to pull the riskiest move of all and that was infiltrate his bedroom, which meant we were either gonna kill him or blow him out for good. It was gonna be risky, but with a rut right around the corner, we had to try. Well guys, it is October 31st and we are hanging sets. Now, unfortunately, I have not figured out lightning until just now. We infiltrated the area with a cell cam where we thought he was bedding, put a cell cam in there when we knew he wasn't there, and we got him on camera. So we got a really good idea where his bedroom is, and we're, we're gonna be going in there. And I don't recommend this for everybody, but for this situation, he's just a buck that has a very, very small area. And we're moving in midday and hanging a set in here we're hoping this will be our rut set that we get him killed. When we were walking in, I found enormous amounts of rubs, huge rubs as big as my thighs. I mean, you can't even imagine how big these suckers are. And I know that they're from him. So he's running this side a lot. So I'm gonna get another cell cam on this side and we're gonna be spending the next week in here with the south winds that are coming. So it should be a good set. We're gonna go put a stand in and get out of here. <sighs> I feel good, we're really honing in on lightning. Trey, we're gonna put in a stand right now. We're gonna hunt this tomorrow morning. And uh, the wind is perfect, high winds. We drove by here with the truck to make sure that we ran everything out with the vehicle and not us. I think we did an okay job. But this spot is gonna be epic. It's a massive cedar thicket. And there's some open, this is the only open area in this whole cedar thicket. 
so it's going to be actually shootable with our bows. So we're going to get everything saying this as quiet as possible and get to work. So it's exciting. Got a good spot. just finished hanging the sets and now we're cutting shooting lanes and I understand I probably screwed this spot up for at least a couple days unless we get a rain but this is a set that I will use for years and years to come so we're taking the time cutting all the shooting lanes I'll need for years and it should be a set that we could kill multiple booners out of year after year because this is the mecca for the rut but we got to get the shooting lane so we spent literally two hours cutting shooting lanes so it is what it is jeff's just finishing up a, a limb right up here and uh we'll get out of here well we got this set hung this is the rut set of all sets and uh it was thick thick nasty in here but i want to show you guys these shooting lanes check them out so we cut a trail all the way to there there's like two trails that cross right through there we could shoot down here and we got a trail all the way to there that we could shoot through so this set will be good for years and years i'm super excited about this and this is the far east side so any west wind at all north or south we're going to be golden i'm excited to get here in the morning well it's friday november 1st and we are living here in iowa after a buck i call lightning
we just had a buck move through, and about five minutes later, we heard a stick crack behind us. Both Jeff and I turned and looked, and neither of us could believe our eyes. Oh my god, guys. That was lightning. I can't believe that. He was right there, 25 yards corner away. We put in so much work for this spot, guys. I'm talking, we've scoured this farm, and I, I was getting pictures of him once every 20 days. And I just, I knew he had to live here. I had to figure him out. And then finally, the puzzle pieces starting to put, a get, put in together. I had a really solid idea that I thought he was living here in this sanctuary. And it's a cedar thicket right in the middle of the farm. And I, I had to come in. I have no history with the farm, so I came in earlier, or just yesterday, into here. And there were buck rubs in here, literally the size of my torso and my body. I knew this was his home. So yesterday, with heavy winds, we came in, we hung this set in this cedar, and he literally came right down the trail, not even 10 yards from the tree, and then he went into some thick stuff. But as you can see, I can't stand and shoot right here. I had to lean over, get my bow on this side of the limb, and lean out. And thank God. That, that first deer that came through jumped the creek right there, so I knew right where he was gonna jump. He jumped it, and I stopped him at about 25 yards, and I freaking pinwheeled him. I'm talking the best shot I've ever made on a white tail. <laughs> I'm freaking out, Jeff. Freaking funny, we did it. Jeff, literally has been here for three days and he was supposed to come film me hunt, but all he's been doing is help me hang stands and move stuff around it. Oh, thanks buddy, we did it. Can you believe it? <laughs> I have to call Sarah, she's gonna freak out. Did you get him? Oh, babe, 
I just shot lightning. No, you didn't. I did, I swear. Did you see him go down? How far is the shot? Oh, it's about 25 yards. He came right under the tree. And we saw him. I, I nod, I swear, honey. He came right under the tree and was making a scrape and rubbing a branch about 10 yards, but I couldn't shoot because he was in some thick stuff. And he hopped the creek right into an opening at 25 yards, and he was quartering away, and I just freaking throttled him. I don't want to go to Illinois now. I want to come down there. Oh, I, I'll wait for you. What do you mean? I, yeah, I mean, if you want to come, I mean, get get in the truck. Let's Let's go. Can you, can you drop me the pin? Yep, will do. Okay. Yes. I don't know who gets more stressed out, me or my wife, because of how much stress it causes me. Man, I'm telling you this, Buck, the story of lightning is a very, very simple one. I pulled all my eggs and put them into this basket. Every resource I had, every cell cam I had, except for maybe a few I put on to this farm. I'm talking all my efforts. I canceled all my trips, everything, and put it all in for that buck. Because I knew it was a matter of time that we were gonna get him figured out. I mean, we put in so much homework to figure out where this deer's home range was. He was disappearing, showing up once every 20 days. He was on the other side of the farm this morning at 2.30, I'm talking a half a mile maybe that way man probably not maybe five six hundred yards that way heading to the corn and i i did i reverse engineered every picture i ever got of him and it was always with a southwest wind he loved to be on this side of the farm so we had a southwest wind this morning so i got in over here despite getting him on camera clear on the other side of the farm I can't believe I pulled that shot off. I mean, I was like, literally like this. Thank God I had my nose button because I swear, when I, like, guys, look at this. I mean, I can't stand up and shoot. I literally shot him like this. <laughs> and whenever I went full draw, my nose button was like way over here. I was like, oh crap. And then I freaking put the nose button right on it. And even in this weird contorted situation, I was able to get the perfect anchor and throttle it. I mean, this thing makes such a massive difference in high tense situations like that. A 200 inch deer sitting right there on the ground. That's hard to keep your act together. But man, I'll tell you, you know you're in the right spot. Yes. Does everyone else do this? Just call all their friends from the tree? I do. I gotta let my boys know. <laughs> I gotta get them in on the action. Did you shoot him? Dude, I just freaking throttled lightning. No, you did not. I swear. Footage sweet. Of course, man, it's freaking epic. Dude, that's awesome. I'm sending you the that kill shot. Awesome. Was Jeff filming you? Yeah, Jeff Jeff just yeah. freaking, Jeff Tell nailed him. the footage. Congrats, that's awesome. Congrats, dude. That's back to back 200 inches. That deer's, he's gonna go 200 inches, don't you think? He has to. Check out the footage. What do you think of the shot? Cause I, I, I haven't looked for him yet, but I feel like it's a, it's a good shot. <laughs> that deer's not gonna be 70 yards. He got freaking hammered, didn't he? I mean, that's a double lung and hard. He's done. Like, he's got to be. He's not going to be anywhere. I mean, that's the best shot. I, you couldn't have put your finger on a better point. <laughs> Thanks, Steven. Oh, dude, dude I'm going to so FaceTime cool. you. You got to see this. Steven. So, Steven actually filmed me twice trying to kill this buck. So, he this deer means a lot to both of us. It's so fun sharing camaraderie with friends. I gotta call my buddy Jimmy. He's gonna freak out. Jimmy actually works like. Hey, buddy, can I call you right back, Josh? No, you gotta know. I just killed lightning. What? Yes, no, I did. freaking crushed him. No, you did. I did, dude. He's. Did you really? I I didn't see him go down, but he's gotta be dead. I mean, I throttled him double lung, twenty-five yards quarter and away. Oh my gosh, Josh! <laughs> oh my god! Hello. Dude, I just shot lightning. Did you really? I freaking crushed him. Dude, that's awesome. I can't believe it. Did you really? I did. Dude, I gotta call my brother, my buddy Brandon Jennings. The giant dude. I freaking crushed him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we gotta call Lee. He's gonna be so pumped.
Hello? Lee? Yep? Dude, I just freaking crushed lightning. <laughs> I knew it. See, I thought it would be a second, but hey, it was a day off. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a day off. You need to step up your game. <laughs> nice. Did you, have you even gotten out of the tree yet? No, we're still in the tree. <laughs> well, congratulations, man. That's awesome. Text me pictures when you get them. Will do, Lee. Thanks, man. Yep, you bet. Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. We'll see you. All right. Oh, Lee's pumped. Yeah, him and I were talking. I mean, that's that's he just killed a 200 two days ago. So that's pretty cool. I, I don't know if this Jericho 200, quite frankly, I, I don't care if he does. It's not a magical number that I hope he hits. You know, he's just an old, smart, mature buck. They're smart and big for a reason. They've survived a lot of hunters. And that is exactly why I love chasing those old deer. And it's because they are the smartest in the woods. And it takes a lot of effort to get one of those guys in bow range. And then it takes an enormous amount of practice and preparation to make a good shot on a deer that big. Because you're only going to get one opportunity. And I'm so happy I didn't screw that up. It's easy to screw up. And I didn't. I'm very grateful. So we're going to climb down and go check out and see if we can't find some blood and arrow. And hopefully go put our hands on lightning. Well, we haven't looked for the deer yet. I wanted to wait for my wife to get here. This is a special moment for us. You know, we put in a lot of work for this and trying to get these big bucks. So when she said she would cancel her Illinois trip to come help me look for my deer, I wasn't gonna pass that up. Thanks for coming, honey. Oh, can you believe it? No, if it was any other deer, I would have been selfish and just left you, but. I know, we have yeah. shooters showing up in Illinois and Sarah was going to hunt tonight and there's snow on the ground over a standing bean field. You would have had a good chance. I appreciate this so much. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to hop in the truck and drive up close to where we uh, were hunting and get things rolling. Bam! Well, we are now going to go look for my buck. We haven't looked for it yet. I wanted my wife to be a part of it. And so she drove almost two hours up to the farm to uh, come help me track it. So thanks, honey. Welcome. All right. We're going to go look for him. <laughs> I'm excited. It's not like you were high up or anything. <laughs> so, so we literally spent four hours yesterday cutting shooting lanes through all this because it's so thick. I can shoot there, there, and then the last branch we cut was right there. I was like, for the one weird reason he would ever be on that bank, which wouldn't make any sense because there's no reason for him to go over there. Let's just cut that one limb. So he literally, we had a buck come down this morning and walk on, on that trail right there. And then he, he came down this trail right here. The first time he saw him, he was standing right here. And then, and then he comes over here. He goes right here. There was one of these bushes, I think it was this guy right here. Comes over and starts raking right here. And if he would have went this way, where this trail is, I would have never got it. But by the grace of God, he turned right here, jumped over this, like he literally does this, and stands right here. Oh, yeah, right here. Okay, guys. Oh my gosh, look at all this blood. Okay guys, well we just found my arrow. <clears throat> the Sever 2.1 found its mark for sure. So uh, I'm just stick that in my quiver like that. And guys, I mean it's two feet from where we shot him. Don't you say anything. 
You always do that to me. Right here. It's up high. Yeah, it's up. It's like spraying through. Right, right there by here. your hand. Right there. Right there. Yeah. That is a lot of bone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at this beast. He's, he's been dead a while. Look at that hammer. Wow. What an absolute toad. <sighs> Can you guys believe it? <laughs> we got lightning. So much work went into this old giant. I mean, I literally, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, this has been our number one target buck all year. We got some pictures of him in velvet. And we, we were working, trying to get him figured out. He was only showing up once every 20 days. And it was just not an easy find. I'm just trying to get him figured out. Finally, we figured, honed in on this home core area, which was this place I call the sanctuary, big cedar thicket. We went in there and scouted it yesterday to hang a set, and there was buck rubs in here just shredded the size of your thigh. I mean, it was just unbelievable. I mean, this deer is an absolute stud. You know, I don't care what he scores, quite frankly. You know, I just love chasing old mature deer, especially ones this smart and this hard to kill. I had about a day and a half to get him because it's November 1st and once this old boy gets on a doe he'll be done for like the next 20 days because he'll just go from doe to doe and it'll be really hard to get on him but I mean we're we're talking about a world-class Iowa buck right here I mean man this guy is an absolute stud <laughs> I'm so grateful come on in honey Nice. What do you think of that? He's awesome. He's awesome, isn't he? Yeah, he's got that, like, that's probably almost two inches. He's got a lot of stuff going off his bases. Little flyers and this giant, huge inline. What a beautiful deer. I mean, these guys, my hand's seven inches. I mean, that's, that's all a 13. I mean, my gosh, that one, that one is literally 14 inches on his right side. That one, wow, what a giant. A booner for sure. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you guys the shot. This is the best shot I've ever made on a deer, hands down. He was 26 yards, quartering away slightly. And the entry went in right here, quartering away, and it came out right here. Come check this out. 
So I guarantee you I got both lungs and the heart and the deer still made it 150 yards. It just goes to show you what these old, old bucks can handle. I mean, they are tough, tough deer and uh, I could be more proud of that shot and having equipment perform flawlessly was super important. I mean, so much went into getting this buck. I just could be more grateful.